Chemiluminescence Immunoassay Analyzer Immunoassays are tests based on the specific binding that occurs between an antibody and the antigen that it specifically recognizes. Multiple methods are available for immunoassays. The predominant ones used are ELISA and Chemiluminescence Immunoassay. Chemiluminescence Immunoassays are used to estimate those analytes which have extremely low concentrations in the blood such as hormones, serological markers and drugs. Chemiluminescence immunoassay is a method to determine the concentration of samples according to the intensity of the luminescence that a chemical reaction emits. The following reaction sequence illustrates the basic principles of a reaction. The microparticle reagent is mixed with the patient or control sample. These microparticles are paramagnetic and coated with captured molecules. The reaction mixture incubates and the analyte present in the sample binds to the corresponding capture molecules on the microparticles forming the immune complex. A magnet attracts the paramagnetic microparticles now bound to the specific analyte to the wall of the reaction vessel. Washing at this stage removes all unbound materials. A chemiluminescent acridinium labeled conjugate is now added which binds to the immune complex to complete the reaction mixture. After a period of incubation, the reaction mixture is again washed to remove unbound materials. Pre-trigger is added next. The pre-trigger creates an acidic environment to prevent early release of energy or light emission. Trigger solution is now added to complete the reaction. The resulting chemiluminescent reaction is measured as relative light units. A direct relationship exists between the amount of antigen or antibody in the sample and the relative light units detected by the system optics. The generated signal in RLUs is directly proportional to the concentration of analyte and is computed accordingly. Fully automated equipment usually have a high throughput of about 100 tests per hour and have a walkaway feature. The samples can be loaded in the primary sample tubes with positive identification. These types of analyzers are computer controlled and can easily be connected to the lab information system for increased data management capabilities. The system is capable of detecting various analytes such as viral hepatitis markers, thyroid gland function markers, cardiac function markers such as troponin T, metabolites such as vitamin B12. We will illustrate thyroid stimulating hormone as an example of an analyte. Components Most chemiluminescent immunoassay machines have the following main components. Processing center The processing center is the main activity area of the processing module. Samples and reagents are dispensed and mixed into reaction vessels in the process path where assay processing is performed. A probe which is common for reagents and samples. The probe is supported by the syringe assembly for aspiration and dispensing. The washing unit, which is supported by a washing pump. Processing center is a covered circular track that provides incubation temperatures, liquid aspiration and wash points as necessary for the assay protocol. Disposable reaction vessels. Reaction vessels are different in different analytical systems. Some systems have pre-coated reaction vessels with either antigens or antibodies coated on the reaction vessel. If an antigen is to be detected in a sample, then the corresponding antibody will be coated and vice versa. The reaction vessel is dropped into the reaction vessel loader and hopper assembly which provides onboard storage for reaction vessels and transports them into the process path. The System Control Center is a computer system that provides software interface to the immunoassay system 
and can provide an interface to a host computer. From the system control center, you can configure the system, enter patient control and calibration orders, review patient results, control data, calibration results, etc. The supply and waste center is the onboard storage area for bulk solutions and waste. Wash buffer storage area provides onboard storage of wash buffer. The waste storage area provides a storage area for the solid waste container that holds used reaction vessels and the liquid waste container. These containers are accessed by sliding out the waste drawer. The sample handler is a transport system used for loading calibrators, controls and patient samples and presenting them to the processing module. Reagents The basic reagents are microparticle solutions, conjugate solutions, diluent, pre-trigger and trigger solutions. Sample requirements Samples can be processed on the system in primary sample tubes, aliquot tubes or reaction cups. Adequate sample volume is important to get reliable assay results. Sample cup volume is the combination of sample cup dead volume and sample volume of the ordered assays which is usually specified by the reagent manufacturer on the package insert or reagent application sheet. For this machine, the sample cup dead volume is 50 microliters. Primary tube volumes. When using primary tubes, determine if your equipment has a cap piercing mechanism. If not, then remove any tube closures and verify from the user manual the column of sample that should be available above the clot, gel separator or plasma or red cell interface. For this machine, the column of sample above the clot should be 8 mm. Alicot tube volumes. When using alicot tubes, remove any tube closures and verify adequate sample is present in the tube. Use the sample gauge label on the sample carrier to verify at least 8 mm of sample is present in the tube. Requirements for handling specimens Follow all usual precautions for collecting blood by venipuncture to avoid specimen hemolysis. See the reagent package insert for detailed assay specific information about specimen collection, preparation and storage. Consider all clinical specimens, reagents, controls and calibrators that contain human source materials as potentially infectious. Reagent loading. The TSH reagent kit includes the microparticle reagent, the conjugate and the assay diluent. Place reagent bottles on the matching colored sections of the reagent carrier and load them into the machine. The carrier transport picks up the carrier and moves it past the barcode reader. The barcode reader identifies the reagent kit and the carrier transport loads the carrier on the reagent carousel. Sample loading. Before loading test samples, verify the calibration status of the analyte to be tested. Also, run quality controls. Do not use calibrators or controls if the expiration date is exceeded. Determine the minimum sample volume required in the sample cup or tube as described earlier. In a laboratory where the equipment is not connected to the lab information system, sample identification details have to be entered manually in the system. Print the order list report to ensure that you load the samples in the correct carrier position. Important, you are responsible for loading the correct sample in the correct position. Place the sample in the sample carrier. When loading sample cups or tubes, ensure that you have pushed them completely down into the sample carriers and that they are not tilted. Avoid splashing outside of the sample cups or tubes. Load the carrier into a priority section or a routine section by pushing it in until the indicator illuminates. Ensure 
The number of samples loaded matches the number of samples in the order. Operation The reaction vessel is picked by the picker arm and is dropped into the process path. The probe picks the defined amount of sample and dispenses it into the reaction vessel. The probe aspirates the microparticle solutions and dispenses into the reaction vessel. Sample and microparticle get thoroughly mixed with the help of vortexer and are incubated. The reaction vessels then go for washing. The probe is washed in between each step. Now, the probe aspirates the conjugate and dispenses into the washed reaction vessel. The solution is mixed by the vortexer followed by incubation and another wash. Pre-trigger and trigger solution is added. This will trigger the emission of light, which is measured in relative light units with the help of optics. RLUs are converted into optical densities by the system and the reading is given for the analyte. Maintenance The system software for this machine provides a user-friendly interface for performing and tracking your maintenance activities. The maintenance screen displays procedures that are scheduled to be performed. Once you initiate a procedure, step-by-step -step instructions walk you through its completion. Stand the biohazard symbols as depicted on the machine before you proceed with maintenance as you may be exposed to potentially infectious material. Daily maintenance. Probe cleaning is done on command by the system. Vacuum line cleaning is done by the system on command. Weekly maintenance. Probe cleaning. Clean the probes and surrounding areas with distilled water. Use a sterile swab and dip it in distilled water. Gently clean the outside of the probes, taking care not to bend or break the probes. Wash cup cleaning. This is where the probe is washed and leaves debris. This needs to be cleaned manually. Remove the wash cup, clean with distilled water and replace gently. Wash zone probe cleaning. This is done with 0.5% hypochlorite and a probe conditioning solution to remove the residual hypochlorite. Place both solutions on the reagent carrier and load it on the system. The cleaning process will commence automatically on giving the command. Monthly maintenance. Clean the air filter manually to remove dust buildup from the air filters. Since the filters must be reinstalled dry, it is recommended you rotate between two filters to improve efficiency. Calibration Equipment calibration is to be done annually by the technical support team of the manufacturer, where probe, optical system verification, wash zone aspiration are calibrated as per the format provided by the manufacturer. If the analyzer is under warranty, this is the responsibility of the manufacturer. If the machine has contractual or annual maintenance contract, it is the responsibility of the agency depending on the terms and conditions. Check with your tech support for the calibration schedule and the components to be calibrated. Analyte calibration. This should be done when there is reagent lot change as per the calibration stability or as a part of corrective action in quality control failure. In this system, the calibrator is in liquid state, stable until expiry after opening. It is to be stored at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. Use the dropper provided to avoid contamination. The dead volume is 50 microliters. Therefore, depending on the assay calibrated, add the calibrator required. For example, if the recommended calibrator volume is X, then the total volume of calibrator required is dead volume plus X. For TSH, two calibrators are used. The calibrators yield concentrations as shown on the kit insert. TSH calibrator stability is 29 days, which means every 29 days the assay has to be recalibrated. 
understand that more the number of calibrators, more accurate is the test result. Calibration curve details screen will reveal the details of the calibrator used, such as calibrator lot, expiry date, date of calibration performed. For this machine, the factory settings are done with six calibrators, from calibrator A to calibrator F, with values ranging from 0 to 100. After performing calibration, relative light units for all values of calibrators are plotted by the equipment. The equipment automatically rejects unacceptable relative light units. The status of the calibration can be accessed from the calibration status screen, which clearly shows whether the calibration passed or failed. It is ideal to document the calibration relative light units. From the calibration status screen, you can view a summary list of the calibration for each assay and reagent lot currently loaded on the system. Information about previously performed calibrations can be accessed from the calibration history screen. Linearity. Linearity for the TSH is 100. If a sample exceeds 100, it will flag with the greater than symbol. In many analyzers, the samples have to be diluted externally as per the laboratory's reportable range. Appropriate calculation should be done by taking the dilution factor into account. The equipment used in this demonstration can be programmed to perform the dilution internally. The sample is run in the dilution mode and the result can be read directly. Internal quality control. For TSH, three levels of quality controls should be ideally run as the clinical decision levels can be hypo, normal or hypothyroid. The corresponding mean and reference range values are available on the quality control kit insert for a particular analyte. Levy Jennings chart should be plotted for each quality control run. For more details on quality control, please refer to the training module on quality controls. External quality control. A laboratory should also enroll in a regular equats program, waste disposal. Each facility should ensure that waste is disposed of in accordance with the local biomedical waste disposal regulations.